I sell used clothes online. I usually hit thrift stores and buy clothes at the cheapest I can find to later sell them online on different platforms just to give a rundown of what I do. I get what you're thinking. Or, well, I often get the same questions, so I assume you're thinking the same thing. Is it a real job? Don't you feel bad selling clothes that someone donated? Aren't you scamming people? And the answer is... No. I don't feel bad. I'm helping the Earth, and thrift shops sell donations too, so how am I different? But anyway, this isn't why I'm writing here. My boyfriend told me about the sub, so I figured it was best to explain my experience here. Lately, the stores I go to find clothing in are closed for reasons you guys must know about, so basically, I can't find stuff to sell. But I got the bright idea of posting a sign on one of those neighbor apps next door, I think, asking people for clothing donations if they happen to be cleaning out their closets at this current time. It was really cool, I got a bunch of responses, and all I had to do was go to people's houses and pick up bags of clothing from their porches. For free. Well, yesterday, I hit five houses. They were all in the city, except for the last one. I was most excited for this last one because the lady had promised me a bunch of clothing her teenage daughter didn't wear anymore. And that usually meant it was to some degree very trendy and in season so I could sell it for a quick buck. This last house was a bit on the outskirts of town. I was driving around severely caffeinated and in a good mood, so I didn't mind going a bit out of my way to it. When I got there, it was a normal looking house. This area was filled with ranch-style houses, pretty spread out. I'd seen a couple of people riding horses on my way through the bumpy dirt road to give you an idea of the type of setting. When I get to the house, there was no trash bags on the porch. Okay, this was slightly weird because we'd agreed the lady would leave the bags on the porch so I could just swoop in and grab them. I opened the app and wrote the lady a message. She responded with, please knock on the front door. Okay? I knew that defeated the whole purpose of keeping a distance, but maybe there is a legitimate reason behind this. Maybe there were too many bags to leave out? I went up to the front door and knocked, gripping my phone in one hand the whole time. When the front door opened, there was a very tall man grinning on the other side. Hi, I'm looking for Sandra. She's in our girl's bedroom. His smile was too wide and the entire bottom row of his teeth was speckled with brown. Oh, well... Clothes. You want the clothes, right? The man stepped to the side. I expected him to reach and hand over the bag of clothes, but he motioned inside. Sandra's packing them up. Just go up the stairs and to the second door on the right. I stood there dumbly. Y you want me to go inside? Is that okay? Sure but I was the one who didn't want to go in. I swallowed. Well, come on, come in. The man reached for my wrists and pulled me inside before I could even think to physically respond. I stepped into the small hallway, already having reached the bottom of the stairs. Upstairs, Sandra! Here! <laughs> I heard a feminine sounding voice upstairs and then a fit of coughing. Well, I... Up here! The woman yelled again. I looked at the man and he continued to grin at me. Oh, God, fine. I was already inside. I know what you're thinking and now I wish I, I hadn't even stepped a foot up to the stairs. But I did. And the weird, tall man stayed standing where I'd been down below. Still smiling and waving a hand to direct me forward. I glanced at the wall as I walked down the hall. There were framed photos of a family, parents, and a teenage girl. I heard sniffling as I got to the second door on the right. Hi, Sandra? I did my best to sound polite. I had my phone in one hand still, and my finger was pressing down on one of the side buttons. I stepped into a teenage girl's room. The walls were purple, there was a bunch of string lights, and a made bed. I heard someone sniff to the side and turned to see the illest-looking woman I'd ever seen in my life. She was hunched over inside the closet, her hair long and matted behind her head. She turned to me and I knew that that was when I had to get out of there. Her face was pale and thin. When she smiled, like her husband or whoever that was downstairs, her bottom teeth were stained with brown. You must be Dev, right? I opened my mouth, looking at this 
this walking corpse who was talking to me. Her eyes were small slits, but she had a few tears leaking at the corner of one. Yes, Sandra? Here's the stuff. Sorry, it was taking me forever. The woman's eyes shifted as she looked me up and down. I squeezed my phone. This was Nina's. Oh, okay. Thank you. I gripped one of the black bags. There was a movement inside of it. I th think this should be fine. Take all of it. Sandra straightened up. She was taller than me. Oh, okay. I had to get out of there. I squeezed one of the bags and shuffled back toward the door. Th that's okay. That She doesn't need them anymore. She won't wear them anymore. A moan escaped Sandra's mouth. Her eyes shut for real this time, and she seemed to be screaming without opening her mouth. I heard the stairs creak and figured this could only get worse. I threw all of this. I, I couldn't even think to let go of the bag, by the way. Squeezing the moderately heavy bag, I scrambled out of the room, pushing past a tall silhouette and stumbling down the stairs. I heard something stir towards me where I assumed the living room was, but I didn't see anything else because I flung the door open and ran straight to my car. As I locked the doors and turned the car on, the tall man opened the door and, and waved. He, he actually waved. When I got back to the house, I stumbled out and ran to the door where my boyfriend was waiting. Supposedly, I looked very pale and freaked out. And I felt that way, too. Seriously, I'd never felt so tense and uncomfortable. <sighs> Once I'd calmed down a bit and told my boyfriend, I'd realized I'd been clenching my jaw and it hurt for another hour afterward. My boyfriend and I got the bags out and I set the bag I'd grabbed from the last house in a corner of our living room, feeling like I should have just chucked it into the trash instead or something. But curiosity got the best of me, so in no time I dragged it out and pulled it open. There were normal teen girl clothes in there. Once I took them out and held them up to the light, I saw the stains. Yellow. Brown. Red. I threw the bag out. I didn't know what those stains were, and honestly, I was not interested in further pursuing the matter. I obviously took my clothes donation post down last night. This morning, my boyfriend woke me up and made me follow him to the front door. As I write this, I'm scared to even open my front door again to see the three other black bags neatly grouped together with a post-it note that says, You forgot this. Sandra. Smiley face. Never asking for strangers' clothes again.